you know, every, <laughs> I feel like no one would believe life if, uh, if I didn't have like, I guess proof or whatever, but things have been fucking absolutely insane. My sister has been in the hospital, what they call a hemodramatic stroke, which is in your brain. And come to find out that she has a brain aneurysm. She's been, long story short, she's been in the hospital for like three weeks. They're trying to do an operation where they put the shunt into the brain, which is like a little net, basically a wire net that goes into the blood vessel and stops the blood from going into a certain area so that, you know, she doesn't bleed into her brain. And then about a week into her being in the hospital, my dad was put into the hospital for kidney failure. He's been let out. He's home on meds and on rest. There's that. And then this other thing that you keep hearing me do, I mean, lifting this and scanning, these are called acetates. Can you even see the design on there? They're acetate stencils are what tattooers used before modern Thermofax transfer machines existed. You cut the design and then you rub carbon into it, place it on the skin, it leaves a little carbon outline, and you, and you tattoo it. Really old. Uh, they're probably from like the 60s, 70s. They were used predominantly in like the, from the 40s to the, I think the 60s. These came from Randy, my old mentor's storage unit, who got these from a tattooer named Carolina Slim and his son Carolina Jim, Slim Jim. And when they passed, the acetates were given to Randy. And Randy just put them into a storage unit. So when I went out to North Carolina, me and Randy's son went through the storage unit and I was like, yo, you gotta let me take these. They need to be scanned in because you have at least one book here. I mean, you probably have two books, so maybe even three. There's so many of them. Two, three, four, five, I don't know, a huge pile. Look at this pile of folders back here. So I have been spending a lot of my free time just scanning these things so that they can be preserved. You know, I feel compelled that this has to be done, which I'm fine with. It's just crazy how much time it's taking. Like, it's fun to see all these designs. Like, I, every time I pick one up, I'm like, oh shit, this is fucking cool. But it is crazy how many there are. Every time I think about complaining about it, I just, I just remind myself that someone had to carve all of these. Well, of course we got ski season coming up, which is exciting. It's not for a couple months. My lovely wife. So, you know, me and Alex, we got married in a fever, as the Johnny Cash song says. But we got married uh, in our kitchen. You know, we didn't have a wedding. It was during COVID, so we didn't even go to the courthouse. It was just through Zoom. We never went on a honeymoon. We haven't done anything really in, in years. Alex told me like she's like you know i did something while you were asleep last night and i got real worried because i thought oh god here we go we're getting another horse thankfully it's not another horse but she did book us a cruise it's a ridiculous cruise we're going on an icon of the seas i think it's the biggest cruise ship in the world right now it's got like what it's basically like a floating city water slides and laser tag and like all the food you can imagine eating i've been on one cruise when i was a kid if you ask me like you want to go on a cruise normally I'm like probably not i'm not trying to deal with it but when you see the videos about this fucking cruise ship and you see the food and all the stuff you can do and you go to this like private island and all this shit it's very decadent but it looks pretty pretty awesome it's hard not to get too excited because it's just like you know it's like a hundred and some odd days away in 2025 so we'll have a new president all of this political bullshit will be over with hopefully the country is still standing I, I don't really think either side is gonna accept the outcome but that's another story altogether and it should be fun it'll be nice it'll be like the first time uh in the past few years that we'll do any we, we, that we could do anything um, every day again is surrounded with emptying out this house and going through stuff so we're both pretty excited to go and so so much in fact that we've been watching videos on the titanic and i don't know if that's really like a good idea you know this could be like a new lane for me you know if i really just slide into the cruise life i'll just become a cruise reviewer you know it seems like a great life it is funny though because i'm i'm pretty much on a you know i've been on my health shit pretty hardcore and i've been riding my bike going to the gym you know counting the calories making sure i don't overeat so it'll be interesting to see um where i'm at by the time we leave and then even more interesting to see like how many pounds i can gain on a simple one week cruise with unlimited food and snacks um yeah pretty excited about it gotta be honest all right here we are again i'm uh the last time i updated i was scanning acetates yeah it was a week ago it was six days ago because it was on a tuesday because i wasn't at the shop today's monday labor day i wanted to scan every day 
but I haven't had time because life's too busy. I swear dog, each folder is bigger and thicker than the last one. Dude, some of these are just crazy. Personally, there's just uh, not enough time because like, all, I swear to God, like all I do is cook food. Like all I do is cook food. I, I love food, I love eating, but in order to like really like track what I'm eating, I have to cook it. Sometimes I like meal prep or whatever, but man, food ain't good after it's been refrigerated a bunch. I just cook, I cook every day, all day. I start my morning cooking. Well, in my night with protein ice cream, I cook a lot. So there's not a lot of time between riding my bike cooking, drawing, and going to the gym, and playing with the dogs, and hanging out with my wife, there's like no time to do anything really. And I don't think that I can even vlog these things because I'm like, this is just domestic as fuck. God, look, this is just one fucking folder. And I'm trying to get this done in a, a good amount of time because uh, I need to get it done. Jesus, this is gonna take all day. There's just this one folder, it's gonna take hours. And the internet, which is just, I mean, God damn it, man. Like, I don't know how, like I check it, I use it in like the bathroom, I and mean, sometimes when I'm like, I have some downtime somewhere, like an appointment or whatever, whatever. Like I check it. I'm not, I'm not superhuman. I check the stupid shit. I swear to God, every day it's something new and dumber. Oh my God! And the fucking dude. The thing is, is all these people get to vote. I am constantly reminded, appalled and shocked in disbelief that these same people all get to vote and don't talk about anything but who they're gonna vote for and like what they think about this and what they think about that. And like the truth is, motherfucker, y'all ain't thinking at all. You do not have the critical thinking skills or enough information to make a solid choice. I I've been saying it now for the internet's becoming unusable and it is. Like I still have it for the shop and for this. I don't know what's worth what anymore. I don't know how to like cope with the world and how just absolutely fucking dumb everybody is. I just, I just don't get it. I mean, I do get it because I realize what this all is. It's just about attention. It's like the attention economy, but holy shit, man. My attention gets drawn in just staring at the fucking, the fire, the, the dumpster fire that is people's opinions. In other news, my sister is doing better. She had surgery and uh, so they did that and she went home. So now she's doing relatively okay. Scanning some of these twice takes up a lot of time because sometimes it's fucking blurry, which makes no goddamn sense at all. There has been some talk. A friend of mine wants to go to Japan, but I don't really know. I don't really want. I don't know how I feel about going. There's a lot happening, so uh, I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea if I would actually go. <laughs> Back in my scanning pod here, I have been trying to scan like every day. I've talked about this a lot, but things happen to people around you and none of it is settling. You know, I think immediately you question your own health and mortality when things like this happen. I try to just focus on like real regular life and remind myself and remember that this shit is not promised. Uh, we're all so very lucky to just be upright and breathing and not in the hospital you know over the years there's just been so many things that have been like shouting out loud like hey you know your time is not unlimited you know one of the big things that's driven me away from the internet is the internet itself because it is absolutely ridiculous and again these things happening like real life shit happening to you around you is uh, a nice magnifying glass on what matters. The whole internet now is a political fucking landscape. Zero reason to, I won't say pay attention. I mean, I guess we all pay attention, but there's zero reason to really get too invested or too emotional or upset or deep or like really just waste your time worrying about all the shit that people are saying and doing and arguing back and forth. I told y'all I was going on a cruise later on, like next year, basically, January, February. Imagine if I already knew what I was gonna eat you know, for dinner on night three. And I just started telling everybody every day, this is what I'm gonna eat on night three of my cruise coming up. That would be insane. And that is exactly where politics are. Like people know exactly who they're gonna vote for and they still spend every goddamn day shouting and screaming about it. So it's, it's worthless, it's a waste of time. 
it's just not your life. Your life is passing you by moment by moment, and my life is passing me by moment by moment. There are things that matter, and I've said, I said I wasn't gonna do this. I'm, like, almost every time I upload anything, someone asks me when I'm gonna do it again. I've had podcasts where I'm like, I'm not gonna go back, I'm not gonna go back for a while, I don't, I'm not gonna go back, but that is all bullshit, and I, <laughs> I've succumbed to the draw and I'm going back to Japan. This was not entirely just my decision. I obviously haven't been in Japan since the pandemic. That was like six years ago now or whatever, five years, I don't know, four or five, I don't know. Dude, time is a fucking flat circle. So I don't know how long it's been, but it's been a long time. I feel like I've lived a very condensed life throughout this however many years. My lovely wife, Alex, you all know Alex, basically, but not really, but kind of, sort of, made me go. She's not forcing me to go, but she's, she's like, you need to go. Like, I'm not doing the greatest mentally in the sense that, like, I don't know what to vlog about, you know? Like, I really do love and enjoy the vlog, and I like to do this, and I like to edit things, and I like to shoot things. I have, my biggest problem is, like, I got cameras, this camera, camera, I mean, there's cameras, 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 lenses, everything. And I don't find the inspiration to go shoot anything because I hate everything. Could I go down to Denver and make a documentary about the Venezuelan migrants? Sure, I could, but like, I don't want to. The Japan trip at first, I was like, I don't know if I really want to do this. I don't know if I really want to go. I don't know if I really want to be away from the dogs and Alex and the, and the shop. Pretty much as soon as I booked the ticket, which was yesterday, I realized like, that I'm pretty excited. We're gonna try and do some different shit. I don't really know if I'm even gonna go into Tokyo. I'm sure I probably will to see Toshi and maybe hit like two restaurants that I really miss. Other than that, I'm gonna try to push the other direction. I've done a lot of the places, but one place that really I really liked and I didn't stay for a long time was Hiroshima. And it's funny because I have to like watch my own vlogs to like see like where I spent the most time and like how I felt when I left because it's all so blurry now. But so in my mind right now, I'm probably gonna head south and then I'm likely gonna just hop around the entire 12 days that I'm gone. Probably hit Hiroshima again, try to make it as far down as like Nagasaki. You know, everything that's in between. There's don't really know yet. I have like a few weeks to really plan it all out. The other fucking funny part about this is I booked the ticket and then I looked at my passport. I was like, let me make sure my passport's good. No, of course my passport is not good. You would think it would be because the last I remember is I came home from Japan, the world shut down and I threw it in a drawer. I looked at, this is my old passport. I looked at it and my dumbass thought that these, these marks right here, I was like, oh, it's kind of weird, kind of crazy how they put mountains going through like every page. Like, and then as you get further through the pages, you realize like those, those aren't mountains, Teddy, which my, which Alex had to, point out to me. She's like, those aren't mountains, that's water damage. Uh, if you don't know, traveling with a uh, damaged passport can be a no-go. I mean, I've heard of people just having like a tiny rip or tear in it, uh, and then they just deny you. Um, I had to get that taken care of. Luckily for me, in Aurora, Colorado, there is a passport office that does 24-hour, 48-hour emergency passports, and I was able to get a new passport very quickly. So I have a new one right here. So we're good to go on that front. The other contemplations that we're having is again, which cameras to bring. I don't know. I'm probably gonna end up bringing way too much. I'm trying to do this trip with like the least amount of bags as possible, but I know I'll kick myself if I don't bring at least a few things. And I always have the option to leave stuff in the hotel if need be. So for right now, we're bringing a, a few things. What we end up shooting with, who knows? You know, maybe this will just be a test on how to travel and make vlogs. Because I have this, I have the tiny DJI, it's upstairs, tiny DJI Osmo Pocket 3, which I'll tell you, it makes some, it's got some great footage. I mean, you get some great, it's, it's a great little camera. If I had nothing else, I'd probably just take that and be fine. But the fact, that I have all this other stuff, I feel like I need to take uh, a good portion of it. And then the other hurdle that has been presented to us is, you know, where to go. I've, like I said before, I've been all over the place. I've been to the north, you know, went up to Hokkaido with Ern. I went, you know, Sapporo, Sapporo. I don't know. This text is not going to be a good text. Well, damn horse got bit. So anyway, I've been up to. Uh, Sapporo, Hokkaido, and then, you know, of course, Tokyo a bunch, all around Tokyo, Kanazawa, Kamakura, I can't even remember everything, uh, Osaka, Kobe, 
Hiroshima. And so this trip, I'm really headed south. The main draw is Nagasaki. I really just want to see and be in Nagasaki a little bit. And there's other places on the way. You know, there's uh, Fukuoka. Both of them are like on Kyushu Island. And uh, I'm really interested in both of those places. Really, it's just all about the food for me. You know, there's temples and food, and that's pretty much all I care about. And shrines. So we're basically, we're landing in Tokyo. We're going to head to Nagoya for the 48 hours. Then we're going to head to Omanichi, which is technically in the Hiroshima prefecture, but Omanichi is supposed to be really sick, more like a quiet little town, tons of walking. It's going to be the one thing that's going to help balance out the diet on this trip is we're going to do a fuck ton of walking, so we're probably going to eat whatever the fuck we want. I'm still going to try and track what I eat. It'll probably be a challenge, but, you know, I'm older now. You know, I can't even eat like an asshole as much as I used to eat like an asshole. I just can't function. Yeah, Omanichi, and then we'll hit Fukuoka, and then we'll hit Nagasaki. And then we'll fly back to Tokyo from Nagasaki, hang out with Toshi for two nights, and then back to the United States. A quick trip, I mean, I, I tell people like you need at least two weeks in Japan. We've got technically 14 days on the calendar. The day you fly in doesn't count so much, and the day you fly out, you only get really half days. So 13 and a half days. It's gonna be a good trip. I'm looking forward to it. Um, I have great dilemmas, you know, the, the dilemma of which fancy camera to bring is a great dilemma to have. I realize how lucky I am. Uh, Alex is, you know, the best to me. She lets me go and do all these things and actually pushes me to go do them. So it's, it's going to be good and I need a break. I'm really, uh, at a loss with how people are. The dogs are going crazy. I'm at a loss with how people are, as I've discussed with their indoctrination and I think I've gotten to an age where tattooing is interesting because the youth want worse and worse tattoos like they're just like people like literally will send you photos of bad tattoos and be like I want I want something like this and it's just you know starting to break my brain a little bit so we're gonna go we're gonna walk around we're gonna eat we're gonna drink fucking sick ass bubble water and lemon drinks it'll be six months anniversary of no caffeine and no weed yeah so it's gonna be a good trip i'm looking forward to it this is where i'm going and this is what i'm doing